Hello everyone, welcome back. First of all, Happy New Year. I hope you all had a happy and healthy festive period. I know we did and after a good break, we're feeling refreshed and now we're ready to get back to biz. Right, now it's a bit of a common practice at the start of the new year to have a clear out. It could be a wardrobe clear out, so shoes, accessories, clothing, jewelry, it could be beauty, could be housewares, could be sporting goods, etc. Now, due to the nature of my channel, I'll be tailoring this video towards a wardrobe clear out because after all, that is my thing. But there's no reason why you can't use any of these tips to suit anything that you're selling online. Now here in the UK, we've just gone into a third severe lockdown, which is potentially going to last until March. And I know that a lot of European countries are following suit as well, and also due to go into various different lockdowns. Now, I know that a lot of people might be thinking, how am I gonna sell items? Perhaps going to the post office isn't the most practical, it's also not a necessity. However, there are lots and lots of companies, even Royal Mail, have all come up with ways where they can actually collect items from your home. So you can sell items online without leaving the comfort of your sofa. And one more thing, just a little shameless plug before I get started with these tips, for anyone that is doing a big wardrobe clear out, perhaps it's a bit of a new year, new me, you just wanna reinvent your style or perhaps tailor your wardrobe to something a little bit more minimal perhaps, I do have an entire playlist full of videos which I hope would be helpful and useful for if you were embarking on that kind of wardrobe style journey. So I'll leave a link for that playlist down below in the description box. Shameless plug over, let's get on with these tips that are gonna earn you more money for selling your unwanted goods online. Tip number one is to look out for those fee-free or no-fee days. So eBay do these quite often. Depop just did one after Christmas, but before New Year. And basically the fees are a commission which various different marketplace or app sites charge for using their site to sell your items. So Depop, just off the top of my head, for example, have a 10% fee, which is their commission. Fee rates will vary from site to site, but Depop, just that I can remember, is a 10% fee. So for example, if you were gonna sell, let's say a handbag for 300 pounds on Depop, as soon as you sell that item, Depop are going to take 30 pounds from that amount and that goes to them. So that leaves you with 270 pounds. So this tip is really good for if you're selling higher value items. So perhaps designer goods, or again, this video can apply to selling anything around the home as well. So if you're selling a higher value good, at least you don't have to account for losing that seller's fee on those fee-free days. Now to find out about these fee-free days, you do have to be signed up to the app or to the website and you'll get a phone notification if you have them turned on and or a newsletter to inform you of what's going on. Now, one little side note to add on to this tip is that it's always worth, especially if you have a little bit of spare time, creating some listings, especially with these higher value items and just keeping them saved as drafts. So then you can keep an eye out for when they inform you of a fee-free day, you have those listings ready to go and you can just hit publish to the coinciding dates that are going to be fee free. Oh, and also always read the terms and conditions because sometimes there can be some little tricky situations in there. So always read those TNCs. Moving on to tip number two, and this one is actually the most important tip of all, and it is photos. If there's gonna be one thing that sells your item, it's more than likely going to be the photo. Now you don't have to be Mario Testino, but you do have to put some effort in. Right now I've broken this tip down into some more manageable nuggets, if you will. Nugget number one is natural light. So use natural light. Somewhere like where I am now, I'm down in the studio. I know not everyone at home has a home studio, but if you have somewhere that has lots of natural light, windows or glass doors, use somewhere that is basically facing that area so that you have 
all of that natural light pumping in. The reason for this is because natural light will give your photo the most accurate color representation of the item in comparison to real life. Taking a photo in artificial light can significantly adjust the color and the look of the item that you're selling, which is why I advise against that. But shooting in natural light can also help aid your camera, whether you're using an actual camera or like most people probably will, a smartphone. The ability of having natural light will increase your camera's performance. So there's lots of technical things that I could go into there, but I'm not going to. But basically you will avoid any blurry photos and any grainy and poor quality photos. Because what you really want is the best kind of photo to represent your item that's really gonna entice that buyer in. Second nugget is now to do with your background, your backdrop if you will. So this needs to be clean and minimal. Those are my two sets of criteria when taking photos of items that you're gonna sell. So no printed bed sheets or jazzy patterned curtains, no busy backgrounds or anything like that. No mess in the background, no like kitty litter tray or something in the corner of a shot. Make sure it's something that's nice and clean, bright with your natural light and something which is fuss free which is going to put that emphasis on your item and not on anything else. Also if it looks like you're a messy person and you've taken no kind of consideration into the photo people are less likely to want to spend more money on that item. Now the condition of the actual item that you're selling is also really important and the way that you present it. So first of all, I would advise that you steam or iron anything that you are going to sell. So let's say for example, you've brought down your storage tub full of winter coats and you've gone through them and there's a few in there that you're not gonna wear. If they're all crumpled and creased and you take a photo of them like that, it just looks like you don't care. It looks like you haven't taken very good care of the item. So again, people are more likely to want to pay a lower price. Where if you steam it, you present it nicely, it looks a bit more, dare I say it, professional. Now it's also ideal and preferred to have at least a couple of photos of the item on a human body. So whether that be a mirror selfie or if you have a tripod and perhaps a phone remote, I'll leave some links down below for some of these things if anyone doesn't have them. Or if you have a little helper, husband or a child, <laughs> dog, I don't know, whatever their talents may be, to help you take some photos just of the item on a body. That just helps a potential buyer see how it fits. If you just think about what you look for when you're online shopping, if it's not on a model, you don't know how it fits, you don't know anything like for size, it's just better to have something on an actual body. And my final nugget is to take as many photos as possible. Now, it will vary from site to site how many photos you're actually allowed within your listing. So Depop, for example, is really, really crap. You're only allowed four photos. However, they offer you a 30 second video. These are also all in square format as well, which I hate, but you know, sometimes people love a square. Um, so they also offer you this 30 second video, which if you're gonna be selling on Depop, use all four of those photos and 100% use that video function as well. On eBay, however, I can't remember off the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure it's 20 something photos that they actually allow you to have within your listing. If you can, just use as many of those as possible. Take different angles, take shots of close-ups, but most importantly, take photos of any faults or any damage, any little situations you've got going on within that garment, just so that you can be as open and transparent to your buyer as possible. Honesty goes a long way with buyers these days on the internet, especially when it comes to leaving feedback. You kind of cover yourself if you make sure that you document any evidence of any faults 
on that item. I actually have one more nugget, a bonus nugget, if you will, and this is actually a thing not to do, a do not, and this is using other people's images. Make sure that you only use your own images, and I know that it can be really tempting to take the stock photo, perhaps, off the, uh, off the website, sorry, that you have bought the original item from, or even, and this is really bad, but to use an influencer's photo to try and sell your item and to try and get a little bit more. Chances are you probably will. However, you don't own that image. The influencer or the photographer that took that image owns that image. If you really wanted to use a photo of an influencer wearing the item that you're selling, then make sure that you list other photos alongside that of the item within your home, your photos, but also make sure that you've written to that influencer and you've asked their permission and if it's their permission to give to use that image. Moving on to tip number three, and this kind of goes alongside the photos, and it is to have a really clear and thorough description box. Right, so there's a few things that you can put down in this description box, and I would kind of header them really nicely so it's all really clear for the buyer so they can just scan down and find whichever piece of detailed information they want. First of all is the condition of the item. So in here you can write new with tags, new without tags, worn once, worn twice. Has it been washed? Has it been dry cleaned? Does it come from a home with pets? It's really important to write these pieces of information in case someone has an allergy. Does it come from a smoke-free home? That one, personally for me, I find really valuable because over the years I have purchased items from homes um, of smokers and I absolutely hate that smell and I've had to reflect that within my feedback. So really important to disclaim all of those kind of things within your description box. Size information and measurements. This is another category or paragraph perhaps that you could pop within your description box. So within here, as I mentioned with the photos, if you've tried something on, you've got a photo of it on a human body. If you say what size that body is, you could then and give a reference to the size. Does the item fit true to that size? Does it fit large? Does it fit small? Would it fit another size? You can just give those little pieces of information. And if you've got time, you could also do flat lay measurements with a tape measure of the item laid flat. A fabric breakdown and washing instructions. So essentially anything that's written on the labels inside the garment. This might be a little bit tricky, especially when it comes to vintage items because labels could potentially have got very, very worn and can be unreadable or they could have been snipped out somewhere along the years. But if you can write the fabric breakdown on there, again, that helps for people with allergies and it just gives a good breakdown for anyone that looks for specific fabrics. And of course, the washing instructions, just important as it would be for anyone that is online shopping. Now, another thing you could add to the bottom of your description box, which isn't actually about the item itself, but more so about your service, and that could be postage details. So what postage method do you use? How long would it take you to package up the item? And do you offer combined shipping across multiple purchases? Tip number four is all about exposure. Because we live in a digital age, we're in an online world. We've got social media, we've got all these sites for selling on. So use them, they're there at your disposal use them to get fresh eyes on your items. Now, listing on multiple different platforms is a good idea. However, I would probably reserve this for if you've tried to sell an item and it hasn't sold on one platform, you could then try listing on multiple platforms. So say, for example, you've got a handbag, you've tried selling it on eBay, it didn't sell on eBay. Perhaps then you might wanna also list it on Depop as well at the same time as having it listed on eBay. My word of warning is to just make sure you carefully monitor those listings on each site because as soon as it sells on one site, you're going to need to remove the listing immediately off the other site to avoid selling it potentially twice and then having a bit of a buyer issue. And this might seem like a ridiculous question to be asking in 2021, but do you have social media? I'm assuming your answer is yes. Use it, use it to your advantage. If you've had a clear out, you've listed some items on whatever site or app you choose, promote them, use your social media account, whether it be Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, use those accounts to get fresh eyes 
I'll list some popular hashtags for selling in clear outs down in the description box below if you wanna add those to your posts. Again, just to gain more exposure. And finally, tip number five is to be trustworthy and to build up the dream 100% positive feedback. This is what buyers love and cherish. It's what they look for. In fact, buyers will often be wary and very dubious and sometimes even avoid anyone that doesn't have 100% positive feedback. Now, this is more of like a long-term tip. The more feedback you build up, the more likely buyers are potentially gonna come back to you. Perhaps they've already made a purchase from you and they deem you as a trustworthy seller. So as I've mentioned, being trustworthy goes a long way on the internet. And this feedback is such an important element of conveying that to potential buyers. And there we have it, guys. Those are my five tips for hopefully earning you much more moolah on the items that you are going to be selling online. I hope you found it useful. As I've mentioned a couple of times, check down in the description box because there's a few extra nuggets, some more bonus nuggets of information, hashtags and whatnot down in there to help you sell on your items. Thank you as always for watching and I will see you guys next week. Bye! Tip number one is to look out for those free f uh, what? Tip number one is to look out for those free free fee fee free, not free fee fee free. Right. Tip number one is to look out for those free fee in how again. Tip number one is to look out for those free fee. Have I just done it again? Free fee. Fee free. Fee free. Okay, let's do that again, sorry. Tip number one is to look out for those free fee. F Are you? Free fee. Fee free. Fee free. Fee free. Fee free. Fee free. Fee free. Okay. Tip number one, and that is to look out for those free fee. I free fee fee free does free fee even make sense can I use that no fee free tip number one is to look out for fr it's because four has got an r in it and it's making me say fr fr tip number one look out for fee free no free no fee fr <laughs> right, come on, we'll do this. Tip number one is to look out for those fee-free, no-fee days. <laughs>